From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss how SaaS companies are leveraging the power of artificial intelligence to not just grow exponentially, but strategically. Joining us is Rob Friedman, who is the head of growth at Zuper, which provides a one-stop shop for effortlessly managing your field sales and service in the most hassle-free manner from anywhere. Zuper enables you to manage customers, schedules, employees, and field workforce, and everything else your business needs in a secure manner. And in addition to providing us with our guest today, Zuper is a sponsor of the MarTech Podcast. Yesterday, Rob and I talked about how growth marketers are leveraging artificial intelligence. And today we're going to continue the conversation talking about how sustainable SaaS growth really looks. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Rob Friedman, the head of growth at Zuper. Rob, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Always a pleasure. How are you doing? Always exciting to have you. Always excited to have a sponsor here on the podcast with us. We had a great conversation yesterday about something that is future looking. What are we doing with artificial intelligence as marketers? How are we using advanced technologies to produce more content, be more targeted, do better research while still trying to maintain our tone? And we're not quite there yet. We kind of define artificial intelligence as a C, a passing grade right now and something that will evolve and get better over time. I want to take a second and actually look backwards and talk about the business performance. All growth marketers right now are thinking about how to leverage technology so they don't fall behind the curve. But my feeling is some of us are actually losing sight on what our objectives are in terms of driving sustainable growth. You've been doing this for a while. Tell me, what are your thoughts on what sustainable SaaS growth really looks like? The way I look at sustainable SaaS growth right now is we are no longer in the age of grow at all costs. And with that actually comes a lot of challenges. Maintaining attractive and bottom line friendly cost of customer acquisition, maintaining the good solid CAC numbers takes a, it's a balancing act. And right now, there's a lot of pressure by the investment community and by other leaders to make sure that people like myself are both keeping the foot on the pedal, so to speak, but not just spending and throwing whatever we can at the wall and seeing what sticks, that those days are behind us. And right now, looking at sustainable growth, what can we do that provides, first of all, steady, predictable, forecastable growth? I think that's a key and also maintaining costs and limiting churn. So you're saying that the WeWork days are behind us, huh? Yeah, those are gone. (laughs) The last startup I worked for was part of the on-demand generation. And it was post-Uber, so everybody's expectation is you can build an app that does a service and you're going to be a billion-dollar company because you can bring a service that people had to their homes. Turns out not every business was Uber, even laundry and dry cleaning, as much as everybody does those services. And what ended up happening was it was growth at all costs. And then once you hit the B round stage of funding, maybe even C, depending on how your business was performing, all of a sudden the VC community, the powers, the pocketbooks said, hang on a second, we're burning in a lot of cash here. Why don't we start to move from just go get high body count and show volume and velocity to let's make sure that the people that we're bringing in are actually going to be good paying customers. Now that we're in the sort of post WeWork phase of SaaS growth, and maybe WeWork is an example, but maybe not a SaaS company. Talk to me about what the metrics are for both leading and trailing indicators for modern growth strategies. So seeing that those days are past us, the leading indicator is customer acquisition costs. Bottom line, how long is it going to take for you to get your money back? 
for bringing on that customer and making sure you have accurate forecasting that is telling you how many months or years can you count in your customer lifetime value. And those are the leading indicators that tell you whether or not you're on track and whether or not you're spending way too much to acquire these customers and these new users. And then on the backside, you need to be taking a look at churn and what your competition is doing. You got to watch that and make sure that your churn rate is on path with what you're forecasting and that you're seeing your plans play out in the numbers, not just your gut instinct. It's interesting that you say that CAC is a leading indicator. Maybe there's multiple different phases. You know, for me, I think the first thing that we're all trying to figure out as marketers is where's the source, right? And then you go through this optimization, figuring out how to lower your CAC. And on the back end, you're figuring out LTV, right? Fundamentally, we're all figuring out our CAC versus LTV ratio. But a CAC versus LTV ratio doesn't mean jack if there's not enough people that are coming through the door. How do we balance getting enough people into a product's funnel as opposed to what we have to pay to acquire them as opposed to how valuable they are? How does that mix and blend change over time? As your company matures and you better define your ideal customer personas, you'll discover it's probably far narrower than it was before. And then attracting those customers and deciding this is what the average contract value is for our ideal customers. How do we refine our targeting to get more of those folks and fewer of the ones that kind of the outliers, the ones that, yeah, they're still a good fit for our product or still will definitely take their business and they fit, but they actually don't make solid business sense. And I think a lot of companies run through this point where, okay, we're growing. You're no longer an SMB service model. You're definitely solid mid-market. However, your marketing hasn't fully caught up with the shift in the business. And you're still attracting lots of smaller leads and smaller customers. So you have to make a business decision. Are these people that you need to turn away at the door? Or do you still let them in and still work with them? And that impacts your CAC number, it impacts the lifetime value and the whole direction of your product. Talk to me about benchmarks, right? Marketers are sitting there saying, okay, I understand as my company is small, I need to get people in the door. As I get more data on who's a good customer, I could start to optimize. And then I could think about extending those relationships to make them more valuable. I don't think those are headlines that are groundbreaking. I think what's changed is what the benchmarks are and the expectation of body count as opposed to profitability over time. What are the benchmarks that marketers should be thinking about now to make sure that they're driving sustainable growth? They should be much more involved in the customer success metrics than I think they were before. A lot of places that I've been, customer success in marketing don't really talk a whole lot. <laughs> Not as much as they should. And I think helping come up with creative ways to continuously satisfy and delight your customers, keep your customers happy, prevent churn rate, uh, look for identifying any indication or through intent data that, hey, your customers might be looking elsewhere. It's, you know, three months before their contract is up for renewal. Use your intent data and share that data with the customer success team and let them know, hey, someone's looking Looking at competitors who is a current customer, we should be giving them more love and attention and identify what's going on there. So I think there's ways to use data and use technology to help prevent churn. I mean, that's number one. It's much cheaper to keep a customer. And if you can get better lifetime value metrics, that really helps the bottom line, the CAC number. So Rob, I guess the last question I have for you today, as we think about sustainable growth, have you seen the channel mix change as we've gone from high growth? Obviously, we've had changes in the way that we use our data, what data we have access to. Are we still Facebook all the time, no matter what uh, industry you're in, or has the channel mix actually changed over the last 10 years? The channel mix has changed quite a lot. It is definitely not Facebook all the time, no matter what. That audience is shrunk and shifted. So definitely depending on who your target demographic is, it may not even be a relevant fit at all. Now, Instagram could be and TikTok and other advertising channels are out there. But video, YouTube is still a solid channel for many companies. Podcasting, thought leadership, making sure you have the right search engine optimization strategy in place to going back to the AI conversation. There is SEO for AI that you now need to build out pages and content with that in mind. So it's a combable and searchable for the AI tools as well. 
And there's one more channel I would like to mention, and that is growth marketers are also community builders now, and they need to be able to help their company build not just digital communities, but also ones that bridge to the in-person, either through events, through meetups, through user groups, partnerships, partner marketing, building these strong communities that can be a source for leads to generate feedback on your platform. These ways also help all those other metrics and channels that we've been talking about. You know, I think that we've seen this shift moving away from growth at all costs, meaning we're relying on paid to sustainable growth, which means organic growth which means finding ways to get access to the right people and give them the information so they can engage with your products or service. But the other important thing that's changed is marketers have access to full funnel data. We are not just responsible for throwing MQLs over the wall and saying it's the sales team's problem. We're beholden to the revenue metrics. We're responsible for the customer throughout their entire life cycle. And that means your focus is not just on customer acquisition, it's on customer acquisition, it's on conversion, it's on retention, it's on expansion. The marketer's role has changed dramatically over the last 10 years. We are not just advertisers. Our job is to support the entire business and the entire customer life cycle by understanding who the customers are and how to communicate with them no matter where they are in their journey with your organization. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Rob Friedman, the head of growth at Zuper. Join us again tomorrow when Rob and I wrap up our conversation talking about integrating marketing into field ops. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Rob, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Rob Friedman. That's R-O-B-F-R-E-E-D-M-A-N. Or you could visit his company's website, which is zuper.co, Z-U-P-E-R dot C-O. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You could subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.